Hi everyone, welcome to another Fishy Business Tank Tips video. This one today is going to focus on saltwater angelfish. I have threatened to do this in a couple weekly updates. And as you know, we have both the Tangs Part 1 and Part 2 videos. This may end up as a Part 1 or Part 2, I don't know how long it's going to go. Uh, I will be speaking today mainly about my experience with saltwater angelfish in both out in service and just keeping them in general. So we're going to talk about saltwater angelfish today. Well, one of the coolest fish, period, in saltwater and what makes a lot of people buy a saltwater tank are saltwater angelfish. Other than butterflies, they're probably one of the most colorful species of fish. They typically, for most of them, get very large, very showy, very striking and they're pretty amazing and what I'm going to talk about today is a little bit of the differences and what to expect from certain species and the different types of species and I'm in luck because Gracie got a good many different types today and uh, we're going to start the video and kind of see where it leads us. Okay so there's a lot of different types of angels that we stock in salt water and there's some types that we don't. Uh, I'm going to kind of take you through real quick the different types then we'll get into actual care of several different types of angelfish and what to expect based on my experience. So first I'd like to talk about the holocanthus variety. The holocanthus angelfish group, we, you don't typically see as many of the holocanthus angels as you see pomacanthus just because it seems like pomacanthus angels pop up more on the list from an availability standpoint. Uh, we have one represented today in the Queen Angel, and as you can look at the spine coming off the gill plate, it is one whole part of the gill plate. In that, I basically mean that as you round out the bottom of the gill and you come around to the right side of it, to the east side of it, the spine juts out in one fluid motion, this obviously giving it the name Holocanthus. Uh, the Queen Angel is by no means reef safe. I think she would probably, he would probably devour just as much as it possibly could. Uh, but it is a stunningly beautiful angelfish that if kept in a fish only aquarium, you would find, you would be very hard pressed to find a more beautiful fish than the Queen Angel. Next in line are what is represented by the Pomacanthus group of angelfish. Uh, I'm going to take you through these right here that you're looking at. This is an emperor angel, probably one of the most popular angelfish. Uh, why? One, because it has two different color morphs that are extreme variants of each other. As a juvenile, you can see it almost looks like a blue and white thumbprint on the body. This protects it against predators and things that might eat it and allows it to blend into the reef. Uh, when it's out in the wild and then you can see the adult colors which it looks like the mass lone ranger and it's got all these beautiful yellow stripes running down its body and this puppy gets big. Uh, it is part of the pomacanthus group. Now the pomacanthus group can tell easily because there is a spine that's on the gill on both sides the left and the right and a pomacanthus angelfish can be noted because the spine comes out of the gill plate itself but is not part of the external part of the gill plate. Over here this is the Cortez angelfish. Uh, this is a different variant of a uh, Pomacanthus angelfish. Uh, not much to say about it other than it's a beautiful color. It's a very hardy aquarium species. We have the French angelfish. It's a very common uh, fish in our part of the world. Uh, you can find them anywhere in the Atlantic Ocean. They're a super super beautiful fish along with the gray angelfish. They represent the Pomacanthus group as well. Uh, none of these unfortunately are very good for a reef tank. Now I have a client, a uh, customer rather, who has a 180 gallon reef tank right now that chooses to keep an emperor in there. Uh, the emperor has only eaten two corals in her tank and it is probably the most beautiful emperor angel I have ever seen in my life. It is though not what I would call reef safe and it may continue to eat more things but because it is the fish she wanted the most she was willing to take a chance and that's pretty much what you'd have to do with any angel fish in the pomacanthus family. They're all beautiful, they all are pretty tough fish for the most part you need to just make sure before you buy one that it is eating, that it is free of any kind of noticeable diseases. And it is a great group of fish and probably the most common form of large-bodied angelfish you'll find in the hobby. 
dwarf angelfish. Uh, these are represented by the group Centropygi. These are angelfish that typically are not going to get very big in your aquarium. The average Centropygi would probably go in anything from a 30 gallon, I would say, right on up to as big of aquarium as you would want to keep, but you can go pretty small with them. There are some Centropygi that do not get very large at all. In fact, they are super small, and you could actually get away with them in an even smaller tank. These would be represented best by probably like a flameback or a coral beauty. The Centropygi group that you will typically see form all angelfish that fall into that category. Coral beauties, flame angels, flamebacks, things like that. Two more angelfish I want to talk about just because I have them are the bicolor angel and the yellow angel, both of which also are represented in the Centropygi group of angelfish. The bicolor is a fish I would have told you 10 years ago, don't even come close to it with a 10 foot pole. Uh, a very difficult fish to keep considering how they used to remove them from the wild. However, in the last few years, I have been pleasantly surprised by just how well they've done in aquariums, again, just recently, last five years or so for me, because uh, I haven't been willing to try them. But it can be an extremely hardy angelfish, given the, given the collection means now. Uh, they will ravage a reef tank, and I will tell you the yellow angel as well. However, if you have an angelfish, or if you have a community saltwater aquarium, they, will, they can blend very easily in almost any kind of situation that doesn't involve live corals. Apollomichthys also represents a smaller group of angels. This would be represented uh, by like your Lamarck angel, uh, flagfin angel, uh, something like that. Uh, the flag fin is the most common one I think we typically see of the Apollomichthys and it is not in any way reef safe, but a lot of people like to buy it for fish only. They're pretty hardy in an aquarium, especially uh, given certain uh, general care. And that's all I'm going to say about Apollomichthys. The uh, Euphophops navarcus, which has now been classified as a Pomacanthus, I like to pull to the side. Why? One, because he is probably my favorite angelfish and has been for 30 some years. Two, because of the versatility of this particular fish. And he really does stand out alone a little bit from all the other angelfish in his own little group. They go into a tank and they're extremely shy the first month. So much so that you may not even see it at all and think the fish is dead. Uh, this is not always the case, but it is probably one of the more shy angelfish at first. However, as time goes by, it is it can be one of the most flamboyant, most beautiful, most stunning fish to have in any aquarium. This is also the large-bodied angelfish that I have had the most success with in a reef aquarium. I am not condoning it to be quote-unquote reef safe. However, the Navarcus tends to nip at the fewest types of corals. What I have noticed is it has it usually picks one or two corals, devours them completely, but leaves everything else alone. Right now, I have had at least three Navarcus for at least two to three years, one five years, in an existent reef tank uh, in service, and I have had no issues other than the initial one that I mentioned. The, the Navarcus Angel, I think, gives you the most opportunity if you're one of those people that is not so much so into perfecting the reef that you can't lose one or two things to have a couple truly stunning fish. And for me, the Navarcus has always been worth the risk if it was worth it for the client. There are other species such as Catodonoplus. This is represented by the uh, scribbled angel and like angels. I don't have an example of that to show you in this video. Maybe in part two where we're gonna discuss feeding. Uh, acclimation and longevity of tank mates with these fish. I can maybe find a few more angelfish 
to show if you guys would like, but you gotta let me know. Another representative of Holocanthus would be the Passer Angel. These are a big bodied angel fish that are really, really tough. This kind of concludes a general overview of some of the more common angel fish that you will find in the aquarium hobby. At least at fishy business on any type of day. Any questions that you have, about any of these or other saltwater angelfish, please give me a shout out. So let me know what you'd like to see in part two other than the things that I've told you about. We want to make a great well-rounded angelfish video. If you've got some questions, throw them at me. Uh, give me some feedback and I will help you as much as I can based on the experience I've had with these beautiful fish. Uh, I hope this gives you a little bit of insight if you've ever been in the market or wanted to get into salt water or know a little more about angelfish. Uh, there is a part two to this coming, as I said. Uh, we will talk about husbandry, we will talk about general care, we will talk about feeding and acclimation. Uh, we may even point out a couple other angelfish if I happen to have some representatives of some of the other species groups that we didn't even discuss. So now's the time to pose questions. What would you like to see in the second video other than what I've mentioned? How can I go into, do you want more detail about any particular thing? Let me know right now and I will make that video around what you guys want to actually see. Any questions about just general things dealing with salt water, let me know. And uh, thanks for paying attention. Part two is on the way.